So I want to start by talking about the characteristics of life. So what defines life? And then we can talk about what the processes are that support those requirements. Um, and that relates to, for humans, um, our organ systems and, and organs. So it is somewhat debated um, what defines life, but most biologists agree that life is composed of cells. So it could be one cell or many. One or many. In the case of humans, it's many. Um, and humans have hundreds of types of specialized cells. Um, some are shown here that um, individual cells make up our organs that make up our bodies. And that's what, what life is. Um, life also requires organization. So this means at every level from a single cell up to an organism um, and even beyond that we need to maintain boundaries. So this would be inside and outside of cells. So in and out, that's a boundary by a cell membrane makes that boundary. Um, this could be in humans, inside and outside of the entire body. So our skin is a boundary. And then there's also different compartments. So within our bodies, there's different types of fluids um, in different compartments that need to be kept separate. So maintaining that organization at every level of our bodies. All right, a big one is responsiveness. So being responsive to the environment. And this means that we can um, adapt to changes. So we can adapt to our external environment or our internal environment. This is going to allow us to do things like obtain nutrients, escape danger. Um, so movement is one type of being responsive. In humans, that involves all kinds of muscles and bones um, working together to um, allow us to move. Um, responsiveness also includes responding to the internal environment and maintaining an internal environment. Maintaining. This is called homeostasis. Um, so despite a changing environment, we have consistent internal temperature, blood glucose, oxygen, um, that those necessary, like necessary temperature is needed for normal processes to occur. So maintaining everything the way it needs to be for our body processes to occur. Okay, we've got growth and development. We are not going to do these topics justice in this course. Um, you can take a whole course on development. Um, but the basic idea here is that individuals can grow and change over time. And on their own. Um, although many requirements inputs and outputs. Um, then there's reproduction. In some organisms, this is simple cell division. So this would be um, like my mitosis. When we're talking about humans though, we don't mean this. This is what occurs for us to grow and develop. So when we grow larger, we go through mitosis as one of the processes. In humans, um, we have specialized organs, right? Um, reproductive organs. And here are some of those. These allow us to reproduce. Okay. Um, last requirement is metabolism. Metabolism is all the chemical processes necessary to carry out life. So you think of metabolism as like producing ATP, 
Um, that's when we have, have a high metabolism. Um, but it's also the processes for waste excretion, the processes for reproduction, growth and development, um, respond with the environment, all of these previous things up there. All the chemical processes. Okay, one more thing I do want to mention is evolution. Evolution is not a requirement for life, but it is a um, consequence of life. So all life um, over time changes and um, becomes comes different. Um, and this is how we get biological variability. You may have heard of biological variation, um, like in an intro bio cor course, thinking about Darwin's finches. Um, so Darwin studied biological variation in um, beak shape of finches and these different species have different shapes to eat different nuts um there can even be variation within species though right so dogs are a great example of this these are obviously partially human influenced that we have all these variable dog species um but even in humans we've got huge variation within our species so from skin color hair color body size and shape um, many phenotypes, right, is what this is, and that's what variation is. Um, we will look at a couple examples of variation. So we'll look at some sex differences. We'll look at um, some things in kids. We'll look at what causes different skin colors. But largely, when we talk about normal ranges of blood pressure, heart rate, lung capacity, we're talking about averages in a subpopulation of humans which is our best studied population, which who do you think that is? That's gonna be our average white males. So they are historically who um, researchers have cared about the most and they're who are best studied. So a lot of our norms are based on this population. Um, I want you to just be aware of that at least because if you, especially if you go into a health field, um, you should remember to look beyond those norms to consider your population um, and consider what normal might be in your population could be slightly variable. All right, a learning check here. And if you need um, any hints, here are is your list.